Welcome to the reading of the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter of 2022. Welcome to lesson one from the series on Genesis, titled The Creation. This lesson is ready for teaching on April 2, and my name's Percy Harold. Thursday, March 31, The Duty of Humanity. As soon as God created the first man, he offered him three gifts, the Garden of Eden, in verse 8, food, in verse 16, and the woman, in verse 22 of chapter 2. Read Genesis 2, 15 to 17. What is man's duty toward creation and toward God? How do these two duties relate to each other? Genesis 2, beginning at verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. The first duty of man concerns the natural environment in which God has put him, to tend and keep it, we read in verse 15 of chapter 2. The verb avad, A-V-A-D, which means tend, refers to work. It is not enough to receive a gift. We have to work on it and to make it fruitful. A lesson that Jesus will repeat in his parable of the talents in Matthew 25. The verb shamar, S-H-A-M-A-R, keep, implies the responsibility to preserve what has been received. The second duty concerns his food. We have to remember that God gave it to humans, as you read in Genesis 1.29, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. God also said to Adam that you may freely eat, in Genesis 2.16. Humans didn't create the trees or the food on them. They were a gift, a gift of grace. But there is a commandment here as well. They were to receive and enjoy God's generous gift of every tree. As a part of this grace, though, God added a restriction. They should not eat from one particular tree. Enjoying without any restrictions will lead to death. This principle was right in the Garden of Eden, and in many ways, that same principle exists today. The third duty of man concerns the woman. God's third gift, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, Genesis 2.24. This extraordinary statement is a powerful expression that highlights human responsibility toward the conjugal covenant and the purpose of being one flesh meaning one person. And we compare this with Matthew 19, verses 7 to 9. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. The reason it is the man and not the woman who should leave his parents may have to do with the biblical generic use of the masculine. Hence, perhaps, the commandment applies to the woman too. Either way, the bond of marriage, though a gift from God, entails human responsibility once the gift has been received, a responsibility that rests with both the man and the woman to fulfil it faithfully. And so to finish the day, think about all that you have been given by God. What are your responsibilities with what you have been given? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember... 
God is always faithful.